Welcome back to Echo Ridge and another episode here in our farm series. I think it's high in time that we make some progress in this colony in terms of an industrial sauna. I believe it's sort of the next step with this colony. We're decently stable on food, we have enough oxygen, we have 12 duplicates, and we have a whole lot of digging to do. We also have a bunch of geysers. At last count, I believe we came up with, what, seven water sources on this colony? And about 12 oil reservoirs? So we're gonna have a huge petroleum production. Which means I need to get oil online, and then build a petroleum boiler, and then from the petroleum boiler, run all the petroleum through, I don't know, 10 petroleum generators? It's gonna be ridiculous, especially considering the fact that we have three natural gas geysers. We're gonna use the natural gas first, because we are nowhere near building the petroleum boiler and getting oil online and all that sort of stuff, but at least you know the direction that we're heading in. Now, in order to start building our sauna, we're still gonna need some steel for things like thermal aqua tuners and the like, which means we need a temporary metal refining situation to at least get some of that going. And I think this area right here is perfect because we have two cool salt slush geysers erupting at minus 10 C. I can take that brine and run it through a metal refinery and then dump it down here where the rest of the brine is around 38 degrees. It's still sharing its thermals with the salt water on this side, which goes from about 50 degrees all the way up to about 75. Now, eventually this whole place is gonna be underwater. So I think we're gonna start with some mesh tiles, say here. And of course, we're gonna need some power for this whole situation. So we'll end up putting another coal generator system like this over here. There we go, I think that's gonna work out well. And now we can recapture all of this, which granted it was just made out of lead, but having the system separate will be very nice. I'm still working on trying to design or figure out a better solution than this eyesore here. At the minimum, while I do like having the duplicates over here, because duplicates over here will be more likely to do all the work that's required over here. Likewise, I want to build a similar situation over here so the duplicates that want to do all the metal refinery work can do so over here. So while the dupes are working on that system, to at least start with, I think we're gonna move all of these suits to their appropriate position here. I think three is gonna be plenty. And I just realized I never insulated this. I think it's because I was looking to do some cooling later. But for the meantime, it sort of makes sense to make sure it is insulated. In fact, why don't I also try to wrap some radiant pipes over here? Maybe that'll help keep it cool. <laughs> and then we'll bring the rest of the pipe up here. I'll still have the gas vent down by where the dupes are living. And then we also can move this gas vent as well. Now the only bad thing is I gotta find all these dupes and unequip their suits. There was some mention in the comments that instead of using the access control on the doors, that we could actually just assign the beds and the mess tables to those dupes. I had already done that, but the reason why I still used access control on the doors is because I didn't want dupes from all the way over on this side of the colony to come use these potties over here. And while you can assign duplicates to these, you can only assign one duplicate per potty. And, well, we have four duplicates, so unless I have four lavatories, I can't assign the bathrooms themselves. And I think since we're going to be spreading more through here, I'm going to add another wheeze wart, because all this oxygen is probably going to warm up this mealwood again, and it's already pretty close at 28.7 degrees. I don't know how it happened, but there is salt water inside my brine tank. This is unacceptable, and now I have to get rid of it. Perhaps if I just build this around it, I can then deconstruct this side and then push everything back over. The things we do to keep all the tanks nice and clean. Speaking of tanks, we have the existing liquid pump in here. So this is going to be the pump that in the past we've used to sort of filter things out. But in this case, it's going to be used for the metal refinery. Igneous rocks should be fine, although I prefer to make them out of ceramic in the saunas. This open air system doesn't really require a heat resistant material. Tie it in with power, throw in a couple of storage bins, and of course, put in an auto sweeper. This auto sweeper is also gonna be responsible for picking up any materials that the kiln will need as well when we're making some ceramic or the refined carbon for the steel. 
Unfortunately, it looks like I'm out of wart seeds, so I need to go find another one. There's not too many left on this planetoid, but I do remember seeing one or two. Ah, uh, here's one right here that we'll grab. And after looking everywhere that there was a cold biome, the only other ones left are these two here. So I think I'll save these for a special occasion because we should soon have some steel so we can start making some thermo aqua tuners and get cooling the old fashioned way. Speaking on the terms of biome temperatures, I'm still considering whether or not we wanted suits on each individual access point or just suits as people leave the base. But after looking around, the hot areas of the base, this one here being 75 up to 80 degrees, I think our dupes would still be fine running through this, digging everything up. This one here is similar, just like this one here. So while we might get a couple of scaldings here and there, the overall environment should be able to equalize with these little areas as soon as we break them open so where we do not have to worry about it. With that being said, I'm going to miss the fact that our dupes are just running around in suits because it makes everything a little bit easier. So I need to give this whole distant colony thing a better thought because I'm starting to think the juice is just not worth the squeeze. I had originally tried to build the auto sweeper out of lead. Unfortunately, it is already too warm for lead here with the temp sitting at 55 degrees. In fact, it gets as hot as about 65 over here, and that's all due to how much salt water's in here. Luckily, this salt water geyser is dormant and will be for another 37 cycles, so I need these cool salt slush geysers to get to work. Well, this system worked out pretty well. Now I just have to open this back up and then shift all the water back, and then we'll finally have a 100% clean brine tank. And over here, we've started refined carbon production. This storage bin's gonna be filled with coal, and this one's gonna be filled with clay. And that way, no matter what we are making, whether it be refined carbon or ceramic, we'll have both of the materials here. Over on this side, next to the metal refinery, we have iron ore going in this storage bin. So that way we have access to make iron. This one's gonna hold all the lime, and this one's gonna hold gold amalgam, just in case we need to refine any gold. And that should be all the ingredients we really need for at least 100 to 200 cycles while we're still using this system. And I'll of course set the priorities on these storage bins to four because we don't want the duplicates constantly loading up storage bins when there's other more important work to do. Similar to what we do with the storage bin over here that holds all the coal for the coal generators. Which this has gotten me thinking again because just like the dupes, we've also been putting these sort of distant power sites as well. Well, if we did that, why am I building an industrial sauna in the first place? Because the industrial sauna, which is going to end up being a massive dirty brick, is going to hold all the natural gas geysers, and eventually the petroleum generators are going to be responsible for providing power for this whole colony. And that's going to be centrally located, because I'm not building five different industrial saunas. That's just a waste, right? Please don't make me. The heat coming off of this kiln is putting it up over 76 degrees, which is gonna cause the heat to spike over here. And once again, those duplicates are not in suits. So I think I'm gonna replace the mesh tiles with some metal tiles for the specific purpose that when this cool sauce geyser erupts, all that brine is gonna drip down here, which will cool this area off. Yes, the duplicates are gonna get little soggy tootsies and it's gonna make them upset, but it's better than having second degree burns. Just ask Pav. We've also got some good news on the dupe front. This Abe is going to be a great mechatronics engineer with the operating supplying. Additionally, they can do some doctoring on the side. They have gourmet, which is sort of a double-edged sword. Yeah, they'll be able to cook faster because they have a plus three to cuisine, but Abe's not doing cooking. But because they're gourmet, they have fancier tastes and will suffer a minus one to food morale. Not too big of a deal because they're also uncultured, which means they're gonna get increased decor morale at the cost of just not being able to do decorating errands. They're negative of being a plant murderer? No big deal. They're not going near plants anyways. Oh, wait a minute. I just went through that entire speech without remembering. That's right, this is the farm. All duplicates have to have farming or ranching. And these two dupes are bottomless stomachs. Sorry, Abe, you're staying in the printing pod. We'll take the mallow seeds. I figured out a way how to prevent the dupes from getting sopping wet. As I said, I put a bunch of metal tiles here so that the brine has the potential to cool down these metal tiles. And then I put a mesh tile here. Well, the point of the mesh tile was that way the duplicate just working on the metal refinery 
which is going to be the preponderance of the work down here, is not going to be sitting in water. And in order to get the thermals to pass from this metal tile over to this metal tile, well, I just put a conduction panel behind all the tiles, which basically thermally connects this tile here to this tile here. I've never done that before, and quite frankly, I'm discovering more and more uses for the conduction panel. The last step is going to be hooking up the metal refinery itself. We already have the power. Now I just got to do the liquids. And while the cold-ish brine is coming down through here, well, if this area ever cools down, because right now that brine's heating up, I think we'll dump the rest of the brine over here. And then to make sure that this area is filled with much colder brine than what this area is going to become, I'm going to throw a couple of insulated tiles here for the sole purpose that this area should always be filled with cold brine and this area is the one that we're going to be dropping off the warmer brine that's gone through the metal refinery. And that'll work because these guys are going to continuously fill this area with cold brine until it finally spills over around this point here. Okay, this time I'm not going to tease you. We're definitely taking this Liam. They're a digger, rancher, tidier with gourmet. Their only negatives are squeamish and unpracticed artists. And I actually think that Unpracticed Artist is a bonus for most dupes because, yeah, they get the decreased creativity, but they get a decor morale bonus. So, as long as they're not an artist, Liam's good to go. Welcome to the farm, duplicate number 13, Jenna. With our system all set up, we are ready. We'll start off with, say, five tons worth of iron, and then we'll put the iron to steel on forever. We've got a little bit of backlog of lime, so we will be able to get an initial steel push. But after that, we're going to be waiting a little while between lime deposits. Now I have some decisions to make, so I figured I'll just go ahead and do some digging while I think about how I want to develop this colony. I've gone back and forth on everything from having maybe four different colonies in the cardinal directions to having a sort of west side, east side colony sort of thing. And my entire intention behind doing this is because we're going to have so many ranches and so many farms throughout the colony in different areas that I thought it would probably save on travel. But now that I'm thinking about it, if I just put a giant tube network connecting everywhere in the colony, it doesn't really matter, does it? I don't know. We'll see how it goes. In our travels, we found another duplicate. This pay is a rancher builder, but we get a big bonus in the fact that they start with mechatronics engineering. Their only negative is they're a bit squeamish. Welcome to the far and duplicate number 14, the Ghost Rider. Very exciting time in every colony. You can see our first 100 kilos of steel has been produced. Looks like Snacky's gonna gem up some more, except we ran out of power. Why did we run out of power? I think I caught the auto sweeper in between fillings on the coal generator, which is weird because I do have it set at 100%. Ah, now I see. I forgot to set the battery up. It's now set on 9060, so we shouldn't have that problem anymore. Basically what was happening is the battery was getting to zero before the coal generators were turning on. I've also started doing some more clearing out. I am going to gut this entire asteroid, which of course had to start around our colony, but it also means I needed to clear up this area, which was our old school, very professional power plant. So I can put an end to all this now, which will allow us to recapture a bunch of lead here. And then I'll finally be able to dig through here. I am leaving all the naturally growing arbor trees and plants that produce just like it. For instance, a pinch of pepper plants. I'm not saying that they're going to stay, but they might help provide a stopgap solution until we're domestically growing them in our professional farm. That is going to be all that's wonderful in the world. More clearing and some more research has happened on the colony. And I think I finally made up my mind. And I know it seems like, okay, why don't we pee or get off the pot there, Echo? Well, the thing is, I like to make interesting content and new content. And doing the same thing every time sort of defeats that purpose. But I can't think of a way that makes sense that wouldn't cost more than it was worth to separate sort of colonies. So now I'm thinking big colony right smack dab in the middle. And then, of course, all of our farms and ranches will be around the outside of it. This also makes sense because our large industrial complexes will be on the outside. And we'll make this whole area just the sort of living, eating, cooking area. Eventually, we're even going to move all of these trees out. But so far, that's now the plan. Our system here has already given us just over four tons worth of steel. 
which means I can start putting it into play systems like taming this natural gas geyser. I've also started realizing, based on how much I've ran my mouth this episode and how much I have accomplished, or rather a lack thereof accomplishment, I don't think we're going to be able to get to the industrial sauna. This is turning out to be sort of one of those prep episodes where I've got to prepare to be able to do these large-scale projects. Luckily, this gas is sitting at 31 degrees, so we have no problems working inside of it, other than the fact that we're going to make a giant mess and leak natural gas everywhere. I'd rather not, but I'm not sure I can get in there and work without end up spilling a lot of it. Ooh, maybe I could go down through here. Yeah, I think this is going to be the way. All I have to do is put a liquid lock here, which means I'm going to have to get rid of the thimble reed. No big deal. We're up to 789 units worth of reed fiber. Now, you might think this is not going to put the oil where we want it to. Why wouldn't you put it over here if we're going to drop it on this tile? And it's because, well, it doesn't really matter. The oil, at least that's what I've chosen, is going to drip down and then fall down here anyways. Here's the Ghost Rider dropping off a little bit, and that is perfect. So now when we dig into this tile, and then open up this tile, none of the natural gas will escape, and the only thing we'll have to get rid of is this little polluted oxygen here. Now the duplicates are gonna hate it, but I'm gonna need this analyzed as well, so we can figure out what kind of throughput this one geyser has. And I think we're gonna sort of build the box like this. In fact, if I went a little bit wider, it would give us more of a storage area in here, but then it also wastes more space. But then again, I have plenty of space, so I shouldn't really worry about that too much. Dang it, of course my wonderful beadlock broke, and now I've got natural gas escaping and carbon dioxide rushing in. I need an emergency here. What if I put a tile here, put more oil in its spot? This is the problem with these little tiny beadlocks. I don't know what caused it to go away, of course, knowing me, I might have mopped it. Okay, we've managed to stop the bleeding. We lost a lot of natural gas. And we've even let some oxygen and some carbon dioxide and all sorts of nonsense in. Am I happy about it? No. Is there anything I'm going to do about it? No. Other than perhaps complain a little bit. And it's taking a little bit of time, partly because our duplicates are inexperienced and they don't have a lot of skill points behind them yet. Speaking of which, looks like Jenna earned their hat. As did Ghost Rider. Way to go, team. But it might also be the fact that I'm only on 14 duplicates. Now that we've discovered all the water that we'll ever need in the world, the sky's the limit on how many duplicates we can hire. I'm looking forward to hearing how many duplicates you would print if this were your colony. Let me know in the comments below. We've managed to get most of the seal around the natural gas geyser, which means it's time for our first steel piece of equipment. We're up at six tons of steel already. So in goes our gas pump. We're going to want a little bit of automation just to be able to control how much natural gas is left in the box. We can use lead for the Atmo sensor because lead doesn't melt till 327. And the natural gas geyser only goes up to 150. Tie it in with some automation. Eventually we'll need some power to it. And then some gas pipes. Another interesting conundrum I'm coming into is where do I stop the four level high rows? and begin the seven tile highs. I've really grown to appreciate the seven tile highs because of how much quicker the digging is and how many materials you save on the ladders themselves. Now, the four tile high and the seven tile high do meet up. For instance, here is a seven tile high row start and here is the next four tile high. And by predicting where the next ladder would go, you can see they would end up meeting up right over here. And that way everything would be nice and symmetrical, but dang, would that be a big base. What would I do with all that space? Unless we decided to put some of the farm inside of it. Or I can just stop being so OCD and not worry about where it aligns. You know, we'll see which one prevails. My wonderful plans have failed. Somehow a duplicate got incapacitated here. Who is it? It is Snacky. They are dying. Fear not, we have some emergency triage cots going down, and so somebody will go pick Snacky up. Because of our large backstock of lime, we're already up to seven tons of steel. But I'm gonna give it a rest before I create some more iron. For the simple reason, we don't have a lot of water here. We're using it faster than the cool salt sauce geysers can provide it. Because this one's dormant, although this one does have 25 cycles left. So I'm gonna wait for this to fill up a little bit more, so we have a little bit more thermal capacity in here. Our natural gas geyser is tamed. I'm happy with how it came out. 
especially with its small size footprint. We have a little bit of excess naughty gas in there, but that's going to be okay. As for the rest of the progress, you can sort of see where we've ended up. This is now going to be our primary base. It's large, and that's about all I have to say about it. It does look like it's going to have a nice little chimney area, though. And this will end up lining up the four rows and the seven rows perfectly. Now, what I'm going to do with all this area, I don't know. But I think that's going to be for the next episode. I'm also going to have to figure out what am I going to do with all this carbon dioxide. It's 31 degrees, so I can't give it to Slicksters. Unless, of course, I heated it up. But heating up carbon dioxide is no fun at all, especially when it's 588 kilos worth. Well... Let me know if you have any suggestions for this as well. Because right now I'm thinking about just pumping it into the vacuum of space. I know this is a bit of a hodgepodge episode, and I think the next one's going to be as well. I had such big goals of an industrial area, but now I have to work on the base. Which, the good news is, next episode's probably going to include some base cooling and a more proper setup with some Atmosuits. So until next time, much love, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.